Welcome to another emo tutorial! In today's video, I will show you my process of turning a detailed anime character into an emote that will read well in small resolution. So we need anime characters to work with. I've decided to go with some new characters from the game Genshin Impact. I drew a few of the old characters already, and this time I will go with the 5 characters that have recently been added in the game. Tartaglia Zongli Zhenyan, Albedo, and Ganyu. Since we're making emotes and not just cute stickers, I need to assign to them specific expressions that we can use in a stream's chat or discord. Since this is not my first Genshin Impact emote batch, I'm trying to find expressions that I haven't used yet. For Tartaglia, his lore says that he's kind of full of himself. So let's go with a smug face. For Zongli, he's kind of dumb, so... He could make a good lost slash confused face. Xinyan. She's a musician. A rocker. If I could do something about music, that would be great. So how about a jam emote with like music notes? Normally I draw these with headphones, but I can't really give her headphones. I would love to add her bass in the design, but the details on it are way too much to fit in the emote frame. I think I can make her look like she's vibing with some music notes without necessarily adding headphones or her bass guitar. Let's try! Albedo. Damn, that hair. Okay, he's a scholar, an alchemist, an artist, oh boy. I could make him paint. Just a brush, a canvas, I'll try something. And Ganyu. Apparently in her idle pose, she falls asleep. So let's make her sleepy or something. Let's get started. Alright, we're starting with Tartaglio here. I'm using some sort of a chibi style for my manga art for most of my emote work because by definition this style largely simplifies the features of its non-chibi normal size counterpart. The art form of manga is characterized by exaggerating attention points of the human body, like very big eyes, exaggerated body measurements like a very thin waist, long legs, big ripped muscles, luscious hair. And with the chibi version, we don't give a lot of that attention to the body. Generally, the size of a chibi character will be two or three heads tall, meaning that the head is like as large as the body. And the art style that I'm using for my emotes when it comes to making humanoid characters and mascots is inspired by the chibi art style. But you'll notice that today, my characters won't all have a perfectly rounded chibi head, as we have a lot of male characters and I'll try to let them have a bit of a chin and features that make them very recognizable. But sometimes that's already too much detail for emotes to read well when downsized to the small resolution of an emote. So I will give them some masculine and adult features, and if it ends up not looking clean enough, I will simplify them more. Keep in mind though that the more chibi you go, the younger your character will look. A big rounded face with big eyes especially makes your character childlike. As you saw, I initially added a nose to my Tartaglia sketch, but I end up removing it in the polishing phase later in the video. Noses are rarely a good fit for emote characters, because they are a small detail in the middle of the face when zoomed out, and it often just becomes a messy smudge that reduces the clarity of the eyes and mouth, while not giving enough space for a clear skin color. Noses are already pretty small in the manga art style, so in a simplified chibi, it's not a big deal if we just don't see the nose from far away. I've told you in my previous tutorials already, but you don't want to put two big lines right next to each other. There needs to be a little bit of a space in between so that you can distinctly see the lines in the 28 by 28 resolution. So you can see that the hair lines that I'm choosing are very distinct from each other. They're very outline-ish. And if I want to add little details in the middle of the hair, I will do that with shadow tones instead of thick black lines, for example. Because again, that would create a big smudge in the hair. Okay, so I already drew four of the sketches. It went pretty well. I can already tell that Albedo, the one with the paintbrush and the canvas, will be the biggest challenge of this batch, because it's already difficult to have a clear emote with just a face in it, and by adding extra items like a canvas and a brush, we're forced to make the character smaller in the frame and risk loss of clarity with his expression. Okay, it's time to turn these sketches into real emotes. So firstly, I'm making my sketch layer transparent, and I opened a new layer on top for the clean line work. I'm just tracing over my sketch and trying to be as precise as possible with the strokes. Secondly, I hide the sketch layer and I add a new layer under my polished line one for the color. This is up to personal choice, but I use a very crisp cell shaded style of shading and I usually only use two tones per color, one for the light, one for the shadow. Thirdly, 
I lock the pixels of my line layer and I recolor them with a softer tone of color. Not too soft, because we still want the lines to define and separate the hair and the face for example. I'm using colored outlines as a personal choice to add a little softness in the result of the emo, as opposed to the black lines which add a more solid, crisp result. Alright, I'm going to repeat this process for the next four emotes. So I'll just time-lapse most of the rest of this video. Try to observe especially the polishing phase of each design when I try the emotes in their small size in the background canvas and progressively adjust the design to take more space in the emote frame until it looks clean in 28 by 28 pixels. Especially the paintbrush emote, the one with the canvas and the paintbrush. That's the ultimate challenge on how to make something complex look remotely clear in small size. I call it the surgery phase. That's when I put on my surgeon pants. And I cut off features, I crop others, I resize things, push the head slightly off the frame, enlarge the eyes and mouth. It gets bloody in that ER room. I go a long way to reach clarity in the small emote size. So keep an eye out especially for the polishing phase of each drawing.
Okay, you saw that I ended up scrapping the yawning girl sketch and went with a more chibi sleeping figure. I'm more satisfied with the result now. So it's been a while since I made a tutorial. I've been having a lot of fun with my other painting content, but I hope that this tutorial will help you out in any way. That's it for today. I'll be posting more videos soon. To follow my content, you can follow me on Twitter or watch me live on Twitch. Thanks for watching.